Evan, how likely are we to see that Goldilocks number that Steve Leesman showed us at the top of the hour, 200K? Um, look, you know, I don't bet against Steve, right? <laughs> um, the interesting thing is, you know, never do that, right? The interesting thing is that, you know, you saw this blowout number in January, uh, but then it was revised down to something that was much more re realistic last month. So there's certainly this gap between the actual job report number and then what it turns out to be. Um, you know, recruiter sentiment stayed flat at 2.9 out of 5. Candidate sentiment dropped down to 3.4 out of 5 from 3.5 out of 5. Uh, so, and we saw the open jobs that the recruiters are working on also drop from 12 to 10. So that's pretty significant. Uh, keep in mind, it was it was around 20 open jobs during the hiring mm -hmm. frenzy. So when there was right. a lot of hiring going on, the recruiters are working on lots and lots of open jobs. Right, at the pandemic peak. Um, talk about where we're seeing those openings. Um, I'm looking at your notes. Value of a college education, not what it used to be. Right. So again, you know, you, was, you mentioned a tight job market. You know, think about if you're going to go fish in a different pool, hey, I don't need a college education. And we actually saw that the not the the the, the need for a college education from a, an open job went uh, went to 30 percent with no degree required. So that usually hovers around 20 to 25 percent, increasing now to 30 percent. Again, uh, employers saying I need the talent, I need the skills and I'll, uh, I'll I'll look in other places to actually fill those roles. But then there's the other side of that, right, especially where I usually am in the Bay Area. In tech, we have seen sort of a wave of layoffs, but they're basically making room, right, for very senior AI researchers, which can be very, very That's costly. Right. That's right. What are the positions, so, uh, too? I want to know how these are actually advertised, the high-end AI jobs. So first of all, fantastic question. Uh, in our Aura jobs report, we saw AI jobs again increase by 15%. Uh, from last month, uh, with financial services up again for another month in terms of the AI jobs themselves. Mm. So there's certainly a demand for AI jobs. And we talked about last month, uh, maybe a flipping. Hey, I'm getting, uh, I'm laying certain sectors off of, of tech, but I'm replacing them with other software engineers, so certainly moving around uh, in, those oval, in those overall areas. I think the other thing that we've really seen that's really interesting is the number one spot in the open jobs was really staffing and recruiting. So that's a really good leading indicator. Staffing, recruiting, uh, think about when you're thinking about uh, hiring more and more people, I'm gonna start beefing up on my staffing and recruiting jobs, the recruiting and the recruiter jobs themselves. I think the other challenge that you're seeing now with what you have on the, on the screen is salaries have sort of not been increasing as much as everyone wanted. So if I'm less inclined to leave a job, remember in the pandemic I was leaving, I was job hopping to get a much higher salary. Now, 43% I, I, uh, of the recruiters report, uh, the recruiters reported that 43% of the candidates had two jobs in the past two years. So I'm really going to have this headwind of do I really want to leave a, a job, my third job in two years, if you will, for equal pay, maybe slightly increasing pay. So there's really going to be a little bit of hesitation there. And that's what we're really seeing companies uh, trying to do more with less.